Hello, 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 hello everybody wherever you are. Welcome back to Adonai's Kingdom. The channel we talk about the Most High God. Nothing but about Jehovah, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, about the Kingdom of the Most High God. We only dwell on the book, the holy book of God, the one and only true revelations which come from the Holy Bible. Welcome, and uh, my name is uh, Audi the Messenger. Let's start with a word of prayer as usual. Oh Lord God, we come before you. We thank you for the week that was and the week that is beginning now. We put everything before you, oh Father, we thank you, we bless you, guide us in whatever we are doing, each and every person here and my viewers also. Bless them, fill them with wisdom and understanding. Let them know that they are living in these precarious times where you can't understand where the world is going. But only if you are in the spiritual world of, the, of Adonai's kingdom. Open their minds, their hearts, O oh Father. I thank you for everything and Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you in this meeting. Take control. Use me as an oracle of your word. In Yeshua's mighty name, Amen and Amen and Amen. Well guys, here we are again and straight to the word straight to the message that I've got and uh, today we are going to go through Joshua chapter 2 but we won't go through all of it because uh, it's got 24 verses I think we'll go we'll let's we'll do half of it today and next time we'll do the other half by grace by the grace of the most high that's how i mean how the holy spirit guides us okay and the joshua so we'll be doing say what from verse 1 to around 12 there yeah and uh the title is protection and blessings this is about Rahab and the two spies. Joshua had sent two spies into the land of Jericho to see how they are going to conquer that land. So the title is Protection and Blessings. Let's go to it. Okay, I'll, from verse 1 to 6, it goes, uh, And Joshua the son of Nun, sent two men out of Shittim to spy secretly, saying, Go see the land and Jericho. And they went and came to the house of an innkeeper named Rahab, and they lay there. Uh, and it was told, you know, you see, it's strange. Let's carry on first. And it was told to the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here this night from the children of Israel to search the land. Mm. It's interesting. And the king of Jericho sent for Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men who have come to you that have entered into your house for they have come to search out the entire land. Now the woman who had taken the two men had hidden them, and she said, Indeed, the men came to me, but I did not, I did not know from where they were. And it was time to close the gate at darkness that the men went out. I do not know where they went. Pursue after them quickly and you'll overtake them. 
verse 6 and she and she had brought them up to the roof and she hid them with the stalks of the flock of flax that she had laid arranged upon the roof in these first six verses you can see very well here jehovah uses nobodies in our society to change history of a nation of a fa family of anyone so you find here the first place they went is to rehab the harlot she was a harlot and they they went and hid there because they could have gone to hide maybe in the drainages or somewhere else but god directed them to this woman because god had plans for this woman so whereby you see uh, you'll also see that even jesus impacted the world in the most unlikely ways completely in the streets in the streets that's where jesus impacted the world most not in the synagogues or churches or but in the streets that's where yeshua was there performing wonders signs and miracles i mean god doesn't need to go to uh, to the king's palace to change a nation to change a direction of a nation if if anything he'll send somebody very small somebody who nobody listens to to warn a nation and even right now as we speak there are so many prophets who have come and gone and others are still here if you some of them if you follow them well closely is if you scrutinize you will be amazed how God is using them. I've been following some, and uh, okay, I look at well, I, I listen to all prophecies. Even the Bible tells us, don't neglect it, but just listen, and then you sort, you sort it, you sort them out. But don't just ignore them. So, some of the prophets for for me, I listen to some of them and then you know sometimes you you know it's you wait for it the prophecy to come to pass but others are fake i thank the holy spirit for the spirit of discernment and that's what you should be doing there use the holy spirit tell the holy spirit to give you that spirit of discernment whereby you know this guy is fake this one is righteous you know it, that discernment comes in a way whereby a fake prophet or somebody who's fake will he'll come and tell you things or even preach to you but you'll be your spirit will be uneasy completely you just feel like walking away or switching off the television or whatever you are watching or listening to you don't want to listen that's a spirit of discernment you'll find yourself if you're so spiritual you feel uneasy whenever you see that person you feel uneasy and then you just if even if it's in a church or anywhere you go listen you'll find yourself it's like somebody is trying to pull you out of that church so that's why you that's the time of being sensitive so as i was saying here god uses the un, unlikely things to change the world completely and Jesus used also the most unlikely people everywhere to change the world to the point that even the re religious ones they started they were jealous of him <clears throat> so you see uh, Rehab here in verse 6 she planted her seed or offering through the roof you know you see she knew these people are special and I have to invest 
in them? What are you investing in? It, it, it must not, it, it should not be maybe somebody or anyone, but still you can invest in something and hide it in your heart. Only God knows about it. So Rahab here, it's like she invested in these spies. Let's see what, it, so she put them on the roof. And you know, in mo the funny thing, in most things, things, when we look up through the roof, that's where you, our blessings come from heaven. So here you see, she planted her seed on the roof, through the roof by hiding God's messengers. And she knew enemies were out, outside lacking and blessings usually come through the roof. So you see, she knew the enemies were there. The, the soldiers, everyone was lacking around, just waiting. But she had hidden these men. Whatever come me, I will go with the Lord. I will go... She decided, I'm going, I'm walking with the God of Israel. I'm not going with any God of Jericho. I'm going with the God of Israel. And that's what she decided, whatever they say. Now, you know, it was like she was putting her life on the line. Imagine in those days, lying to the king. You go, lie in front of the king, point blank, telling him that you've not seen these people they left they were there but they they were she knew if they if they discovered she was going to die that was outright that was law she was going to prison and maybe the way the laws were tough on those days she could have been killed because of behaving like that so just as I was saying, where do you plant your goodness? What do you do? How do you plant your goodness? She planted her goodness on the roof, knowing they are going to give birth soon. And you, with all that you have, you can do so many things in this world, but which where do you just have you ever seeked God and just say I'm going to do this for the kingdom and you don't go shouting about it because I think 80% of the people that we are in this planet Earth are people somebody does something very tiny but the whole world will know do you do do you hide something and only God knows you don't have to tell it to the world Let's carry on. Uh, okay, mm, if we go to... Uh, so, uh, we were in verse 6, let's carry on to verse 7. And then, okay, the men pursued them in the direction of Jordan to the fords. And as soon as the, pers pers the pursuers had gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were asleep, she came up to, to them upon the roof. And she said to the men, I know the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, that all the inhabitants of the land have melted because of you. You know, she has... People were talking about the Israelites. The way Israel was walking with God. You know, sometimes you can bless somebody, a servant of God, and the way it's going to come back to you, you'll be surprised. Because, you know, you at least these people, they knew those days, they could just see God is walking with them. Nowadays we are we are so ignorant with technology and everything has confused us. We don't even know who's working with God, who needs some blessing, who needs to be given a hand. 
to be encouraged to keep on working spreading the gospel of the kingdom so we are so busy in this world and i'm sure one day we'll be asked what did you do while you are on planet earth where i placed you on a strategic position whereby you could be helping people around you there are some messengers who are around you from me what did you do so we have to be very cautious in these days uh, so um, in verse as in verse 9 it was it says she said that to the men i know that the lord has given you the land and that you, your terror has befallen us so it's so interesting when people start staring at you strangely you know the Israelites people are just they were afraid they saw there's something about the Israelites how strong they are it's just the same as in this world right now where, wherever you are working whatever you are doing Wherever you could, you might be right now, when people start staring at you at work or anywhere, at sc in school, in the streets, I mean, among friends, people, even strangers, they stare at you in a strange manner. Sometimes they don't even talk, they just look at you, and when you look at them in the eyes, it's like they've got doubts, and then they look down, they try to ignore you notice that there's something strong something very strong in you you don't know about it but they can see the holy spirit is accompanying you and the moment jehovah accompanies you god works with you there's some i mean it's like some freshness brightness in your life in everything that you do it's just unique to everyone even the Haters, people who tend to hate you, they are a bit confused completely, 100% co co confused because they know there's something unique about this guy. I can't handle him. I can't fight, fight him. So this is what the Isra these uh, people from Jericho saw. All the other tribes, they saw the Israelites. There's, there's something about the Israelites which was very unique. And it made them... It, it it made them so much scared uh, if we go to look you know as usual as i always say old testament goes with the new testament it's all the same thing luke chapter 5 and verse 17 it's a 17 to say 22 okay and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that's Jesus, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town in Galilee. I mean, <laughs> this thing about Jesus, it really excites me every time I read it. The Pharisees and doctors of the law, these people had got their master's PhDs of the law. They are coming to listen to somebody who's been never to that school of theirs. But thank God because Jesus was from the school of the Holy Spirit. And he, the Holy Spirit dwelt in him. He was from the school of Adonai's kingdom whereby he knew everything. No wonder these guys were so confused. Uh, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power, you know, that's the goodness with walking with the, I mean, walking in the grace of God. Wherever you go and you're 100% sure that you are with the Holy Spirit, you are with Jehovah, the power of God is always there with you, ready to heal. If somebody is accepting the word of God, you are the conduit to it. To the word you just pray to jehovah the message comes the healing power comes through you to them so you see here jesus they say the power of the of the lord was present to heal them 
and behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him into, in because of the multitude, they went up the house top and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, You know, the kingdom of God is interesting. We walk by faith. We believe first before we receive. But the kingdom of the world, of the universities and the colleges and the PhDs, before that, they, they want to argue first. They want to reason about among themselves. No, it can't be what's happening. So you see, the kingdom of the world here, the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this speaketh, speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Yeah. So here it's the walking with the power of God, walking in the kingdom of the Lord. You can perceive the Holy Spirit will guide you and t show you what's going to happen. Going back, it's like the Holy Spirit guided this lady, Rahab, to take care of these people because she sensed something great is going to happen. You see, God can use anybody and he can enter into anybody's mind and heart and show him because he knows the heart of someone. He knows that you are righteous and you are there to do the right and so, okay, like for this case of Jesus, you find some proud religious teachers, they can contaminate your offering. Sometimes, in Jesus' case, Jesus, you know, the blessings came. These guys, they had faith. But it's like the religious leaders, they wanted to contaminate everything so that this person doesn't get healed. Just the same as when you are, you've got your hiding place like Graham, she put, she knew her blessings was there. It's like her offering. When you do something like that, people will, ideas will come. <coughs> people will try to tell you so many things. That's why it's good sometimes to hide some stuff. Let them know when everything, the blessings have been birthed. Let them just see it. And they let them start discussing about it. Hallelujah. <coughs> uh, in verse 11, you know, you know, let's continue on verse 11. And that's, uh, sorry, mm, yeah, in verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. They knew the history of Israel. When you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the kings of Am of the Amorites that were in the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, who were completely destroyed. These kings were very strong on that side of Jordan. Verse 11, And as soon as we heard, our hearts melted, nor did there any remain, remain any more spirit in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven, above and on earth below. And now I pray, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. In verse 11, you see, Rahab acknowledges God. Almighty, the Lord Almighty, He is God. That's why I've invited you. You know, when you give, when we are giving, we have to acknowledge 
when you are giving you give your offering you acknowledge god i acknowledge you are god you are everything i bring them in faith and i trust blessings are going to follow me all the days of my life so you find that's what rahab di did and when you you know and when you are covered by the blood of yeshua and filled with the holy spirit people's courage against you will fail and they'll be fearful yet you won't understand you know i mean if just walk with the holy spirit and people will be confused they'll be totally confused uh if we go to you'll see in the first book of corinthians Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 it says but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned so that's why I'm I keep saying People will be confused when, when you are walking in the spirit. The blessings and everything is covering you. The natural man will not understand. To them it's foolishness. It's weird. They just call, they call you a widow. You are just a weird person. They won't understand you completely, completely. Because you walk in the spirit. And if we check on uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 18 Isaiah 44 verse 18 yeah they have not known nor understood for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand people will never understand you completely nobody will ever understand understand you because you are unique you are completely unique and they'll be just watching i mean they'll be just be looking at you thinking that you're crazy so you see after rahab offer after her offering to help she prayed for protection you see it's like she tried god that's what i can say she offered to help and told it's like you tell god i've offered now try me that's where god tells you try me in malachi 3 8 11. give do this pay your tithe help and then after doing that you have to say what you want you just don't give and then you don't say if you don't say god will not do it until you say it you say okay I've done this, God. I've helped here. I've been praying for so and so. I've been helping these kids. I've been doing this and this. Now, oh Lord, you said we try you. I need a house. Mortgage free. Credit free. You just try God. I need this and that. I need this. I need healing for my parents. I need healing for my children my family i need protection try god and you will see do and when you are giving when you are helping do it in good faith with a clean heart god will see and he won't let you down completely if uh, verse 13 and you uh, Okay, 12 was, and now I pray, swear to me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show me kindness in my father's house and give me a true token. Rahab tried. It's like she was, I've done this. Now I want this and this in good faith. And you shall preserve alive my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all that have and you shall deliver our lives from death see it's like 
she's talking that's how we are supposed to be living and the men answered her our life for yours if you will not tell this our discussion it shall be it shall be when the lord gives us the land we will deal with you with kindness and truth hallelujah when you are playing your part charity offerings helping the widows the orphans the poor don't tell people don't go shouting it's that's between you and god i think i've repeated that thing so many times let it be your secret and then sit back and enjoy the blessings of god that's why you will you'll find in matthew matthew chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 matthew chapter 6 take heed that that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them otherwise you have no reward of your father in heaven which is in heaven so we are being warned here if you give so that people can see and you're waiting you'll really wait for those blessings therefore when thou dost thine arms do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men verily i say unto you they have their reward there if you keep on shouting showing off that you did this and then you you find them saying usually nowadays the people give and then when you ask them they say oh, it's the grace of god it's god's grace i'm just giving back to the society yeah we know everybody gives back to the society but can't you for once do it without telling people just zip up do it walk go away go to another country do it walk go away go to somewhere else you'll find yourself doing so many things in the world and people will be wondering who is that let them know about it by themselves but not you standing on mountain tops on house tops declaring that you did it but when thou do doest arms let not thy left hand know that thy right hand doeth sometimes even if you do these things let not even your wife or your husband know that what you're doing just do it in secret your right hand is maybe your wife you don't have to tell them because maybe they'll go and tell and tell somebody else and tell the kids so no people close to you let them not know just do it and maybe you'll tell them later on years or months later on that's when you, you'll say it. but for now just let it be between you and god hallelujah that thine arms may be in secret and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly see when god sees these things he will reward you openly okay and also we are told when you are praying but when thou prayest is uh, the same same book jesus says uh, fasting and praying that when you pray you shall not be as the hypocrites they love to pray standing in the synagogues you see Rehab here was praying to these people, asking them, I know things will be tough, but I know I want prote protection for my family. She was saying it in secret there. Because God has got his own ways, he's not like man. So, and that's how she got her blessings. And we are directed that when we pray, that's in verse 9, when, when you pray, was it, uh, sorry, in verse 8, but not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father in 
heaven knoweth the things you have need of before you ask them. In verse 7 is said, when you pray, use not vain reputations as the heathen do, but they think, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. When you pray, just simple prayers. God just wants to be your friend. He is always your friend. Talk to him. The way, the way we are conversing, me and you guys, the way I'm talking to you, that's how you are supposed to talk to God. Not repeat, 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 repeat. No. Shout at him, shout. God is not deaf. He knows even if you are praying inwardly, the way Hannah was praying, her lips moving, when she wanted a son. Even Eli, the priest, that was uh, in Samuel, whereby Eli thought that Hannah was drunk, but Hannah was praying inwardly. Just the lips were moving because she was tired. She wanted a child and God provided. So whenever we do things, we can do them in secret. But the Lord who sees in secret, he will reward us in the open during midday. When it's so bright where the whole world is seeing, they'll see the goodness of the Lord God Almighty. If you're there, you don't know anything about God. Say these words after me, this prayer. I want, to be a, I want you to be part of the kingdom where blessings will be following you. Just say, Lord God, I come before you as a sinner. I've messed my life, I've sinned against you and I've sinned up against the, my friends, my families. I want to be a child of God. I declare that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross and he resurrected on the third day. He shed the blood of, for my sins on the cross and I acknowledge it and I want to be washed by that blood. I want to be part and parcel of the kingdom. Thank you Lord for accepting me. In Jesus mighty name, amen and amen. If you said that prayer, you can join a church near you. Look for any church, Bible reading, God-fearing, where they follow the Bible. Spirit-filled church. And join the people, children of God, and they'll guide you and be with you. Thank you for being a child of God. And I'm happy for you. Heaven is happy for you. The angels are happy. Yeshua, our Lord, is happy for you. Thank you for being a child of God. And Father, I pray for my viewers, my listeners. Bless them, protect them, guide them. The ones who are sick, I declare healing from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet. Heal them, O oh Father. And the ones who are struggling financially, open doors for them. Open doors for them, O oh Jehovah. They are your children. Take care of them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you. See you next time. Amen and amen.